Welcome to Connection with Brian and Nicole Wright. Hello, welcome to Connection with Brian and Nicole. Hello. <laughs> we got somebody here. We got Mr. Barry Tubbs on Yay! a brand new set. Welcome, Mr. Barry. This is our first Connection recording in our new studio at our new property and new building, and we cannot be more honored than to have somebody as yourself here. We love you so much, and we're glad that you're here. So welcome to Connection. Thank you. What a privilege to be here. Amen. Amen. In this beautiful new facility that you're in. I know. Yeah. And it's just really cool to be sitting here. We have a studio. It's just great. It's good stuff. God is so faithful, isn't yes, he? Is. Yeah, yes, he is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a while, but we've been getting this studio ready. We've been looking forward to seeing you guys again, and uh, we just welcome you to Connection with Brian and Nicole. Part of our vision is that we would connect with you, you would connect with us, and most importantly, that we all would connect with Jesus uh, stronger than we have been before, that every day, every step gets brighter and brighter and brighter, and so welcome to Connection. You can always visit us and watch more episodes at ConnectionShow.org, and we welcome you to do that. We're going to have a few episodes with you and talk about... Now, today we're going to talk episodes. about... Episodes. Episodes. Yeah, episodes. Yeah. That's, okay. yeah. That's a good word, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. Today we're going to talk about uh, your experience with KCM, with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. You have been with them for over 30 years now. Is that 35 correct? years. 35 right. years. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to talk about that uh, next week. On how the, long is this program? 30, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes each one. So we're... That's less than a minute a year. I know. How are you, you going to do that? Fast. that? Now the pressure's on you. We we'll need supernatural intervention here. Yes, yes. <laughs> so next week we're going to talk about uh, basically what's on your heart, what's the Lord been talking to you about. Yeah. And then the week after that, the episode after that, uh, we're going to talk about just what advice in that 35 years have you? do you have for ministers? What advice do you have for Christians? Because... You've seen a lot of stuff happen in that period of time. And so uh, right now, we just want to jump in. Uh, we've got 35 years to cover in yeah. less than about <laughs> 27 minutes. So you better get to hopping. We better stop hopping. <laughs> I know, I know. So you've been with Brother Copeland at Kenneth Copeland Ministries for over 35 years. Right. And what capacity do you serve uh, him at now. I, what has it been through the years? Tell well, us. the title is associate minister. That's what it's always been. When yes. I came to the ministry, uh, there was a man named Billy Rash. Okay. Uh, that, and he was the associate minister. He felt like it was time for him to go do something else, and so he did. And uh, we were actually, we actually started in ministry with a man named Bill Bozanski. Okay. Uh, and so we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the time. Yes. And uh, I was in the mortgage banking business for many years in the business world. We left that, went into the ministry with uh, Dr. Bozanski. It was a great opportunity, great time, small ministry. You know, that's where you learn what ministry is all about. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. a small ministry. Yes. And uh, he, I, I remember, and, and I know this is not about KCM, but it's, it's, it's the history of how yes. uh, it, we began. Yeah. And I think it, this this applies to anybody. Yeah. You, know, you start small and you grow big. Yes. Now most people want to start big. True. But it doesn't work that way. <laughs> if you start big, you're not ready. Right. You know, everything we do in life is preparatory to what God has for us next. Yes. Amen. And if you try to skip the preparation, you're not ready for what you may be put into the situation yes. that you have to confront because yes you know we have real opposition there's no doubt about that right. yeah and so as we move into these positions if we're not spiritually capable of withstanding the pressures in that position yes we're being set up for failure yes right. yeah so we we went into a ministry with dr bazanski I, I remember i came from the corporate world of course you know i was the executive vice president of a a mortgage company, and you got the perks, and the yeah. car, and the, you know, people, and all the rest of this. And so, <clears throat> I remember coming in the first day. You know, when you when you start a new uh, 
project or you, you start a new position and you're, you're excited about it. Yeah. You, know, you come in, man, <laughs> glory to God, we're going to yes. change the world, yes. you know. So I come in and, and uh, there's about 10 people that were working for Dr. Bozanski at the time. So I come in and I, I see everybody there and I said, Praise God, you know, where's my <laughs> staff? I need to get ready. I was the crusade director, right. okay? And so everybody just kind of laughed and said, uh, just go in the restroom there and look in the mirror. That's your, that's your, staff. <laughs> that's your staff. Awesome. We had that so, same staff. Yes, we yeah, did. I was the staff of one. Yeah. You know? So, but what an experience. Yeah. A learning experience yeah. to get out there. I mean, I drove the van. You know, carried all the book table stuff, all the audio stuff. I got there early. I set everything up. Got all the ushers together, and then drove out to the airport and picked up Bill because <laughs> he flew in. Yeah. I drove in. He flew in. Right. You know. <laughs> so, but what a learning experience, and it was Amen. preparatory because those things that we learned during those three years with Dr. Bazanski helped us. Yes. And built our faith. When yeah. we started with Dr. Bazanski. Uh, what he was paying us at the time, <laughs> our house payment was more than what he was paying us. You know, <laughs> right? So we had the opportunity to grow in faith, glory. You know, and to a lot of people be, don't see that as glory. <laughs> yeah, no, but but it is. Yeah. See, adversity is your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's when you find out what you really believe. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's easy when you come to church and everybody's glory to God, everybody looks good, yes. smells good, acts good, and all the rest of that. <laughs> but the problem is the service is over. Now you're back out there where people are not so happy, yeah. Yeah. not so friendly, you know, yeah. and you have opportunities to overcome. Yes. And so, at any rate, uh, it, went, uh, it, it came to a point where Dr. Bajanski felt like that he should go to Florida and start a church. We knew we were not supposed to do that, so we stayed in Tulsa. We also knew that we were not supposed to, uh, to go back into the business world. Right. And so we started exploring other opportunities in ministry. And not going into the business world, did that yeah. take you, uh, that takes some faith there to yeah. say, I'm not going to go back to what I like, Peter, I'm not going to go back to fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now God's calling me into doing something different. Yeah. Fishing was comfortable. The business world, the mortgage industry that was probably comfortable right. a paycheck but that's where you have to decide do i trust the lord or not you know brian it was to a point but when we were in the mortgage business and, and we were doing quite well we made a lot of money in the mortgage business right and uh, god really blessed us and we were uh, we were able to bless a lot of ministries and people and so forth because yes. we learned uh, through brother copeland right uh, the, the laws of sowing and reaping and giving right. and all of those kind of things. But we're in the mortgage business, but it got to a point, and this is what will happen. God's going to speak to you about doing something. Yes. And it's going to be uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> because he never asked you to do what's possible. There you go. He only asked yeah. you to do the impossible. Right. Amen. So he was telling us, uh, it's time to leave. It's time to get out of the mortgage business. I got something else for you to do. Yes. But he didn't say what else it was that he had for us to do, you know. I understand that. So we had to take that step of faith yes. mm -hmm. in leaving and beginning, yes. leaving something that we were comfortable with. That knew. I knew the mortgage business. Yes. I knew how it worked. I knew how it operated. I, I left Arkansas and went to Oklahoma and started a mortgage company. So I know how this works. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he's asking me now to do something just like he came to Abraham and said, okay, Abraham, it's time to pack up and leave. Right. Well, where are we going, Lord? I'll get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> huh? yeah. So that's kind of the way he was. that to way. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just take the next step. Yes. And so that's faith. Yes is believing, one, you heard from God. Yeah. Because if you don't, if you haven't heard from God and you're not convinced you heard from God, don't do anything. That's, That's right. right. You need resolve. That's right. Yeah. So we knew we had heard from God, so yeah. we left. And the we didn't leave exactly when we should have. Right. Uh, because we were comfortable. It's difficult leaving that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where you know yes. what's going on. 
you know. I've done that. And so, but it got to a point where I was just miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Every day I got up and I had to force myself to get up, force myself to go to work, didn't like it, you know, that's dangerous. Yes. Because now you're in an area where you become discontent, dissatisfied, and nothing is good. Yeah. Right. If you stay there very long, you can get in a downward spiral. That's right. And you'll never get to where God wants you to be. But we did leave and uh, didn't know what we were going to do next. But yeah. God had a plan. That's right. And he has a plan for everybody. He has a plan for everyone out there. Amen. That's right. Let Every me, life. Let me pause right there because I know a lot of the people that we talk with, and before you go on into the rest of a very good, successful ministry, and a lot of times what happens is that we run into people as pastors all the time that they've found themselves in that downward spiral. They've found themselves actually sitting there going, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to pull out of this. It's All I hear is a large sucking noise in my life, draining me of everything that I have. And they'll come through the door, and they've lost their hope. Yeah. They've lost their hope. Here's the thing. If you find yourself in that situation, immediately stop. Spend some time with the Lord mm -hmm. and go back to the last thing you know he told you to do. That's go right. back to that and be obedient. It doesn't matter if it's comfortable. It doesn't matter if your brain likes it or not. You can have peace in your heart and yet you can have confusion in your mind. We've learned that over time. So when the Lord asks you to do one thing that's spiritual but your flesh wants to go the other way. You might have this little tug of war going on there, but you've got to learn to put your flesh ideas, put those down, and go after what the Lord told you to do. Or otherwise, what you end up with is a foot in the world and a foot in God, and that has to be the most miserable position. Yeah. Uh, we've done that for years yeah. and years. So if you find yourself in that position, go back to what God told you to do and be obedient to that. You can then, at that moment, you think you can look at it and you can feel like this is going to take forever. Our experience is most of the time when people get obedient to God, it does not take forever. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's days, weeks, months, but just a few. It's very quickly everything starts to change and your hope level just starts going up and up. So do the same thing. We learn by experience not doing it the right way. But we've also learned how to pull ourselves out of it, just like you were saying. So, so here you are. You leave your comfort zone, mm -hmm. and now you're into full-time ministry. And mm -hmm. then, then what happened after that? Well, then uh, we were with, as I said, we were with uh, Dr. Bazanski for three years. Uh, he moved. We yeah. stayed in Tulsa. Right. And went out, uh, you know, just seeking uh, an opportunity in ministry. But you know, what you have to be sure about is that the opportunity that you're given is the right one. Right. It's <laughs> not what you want to do, it's what God wants you to do. Yes. That's right. Yes. And opportunities will present themselves, but it may not be what God wants you to do. That's, That's right. right. And pressure will be exerted. Yes. Financial pressures. Pressures from your family, mm -hmm. uh, your children, yeah. even your wife or your husband yeah. Yeah. to do something, but it may not be the right thing to do. Yes. And one thing you have to do is be in agreement. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you're setting yourself up for failure if you do not go to your family and say, yes. here's what we're going to do. Let's get in agreement. Yes. And until, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You can't be successful in ministry because it's not an individual decision. That's it's right. a family That's decision exactly because right. it impacts everybody. Right. Yes. So we got an agreement. Uh, we had some friends that we've known back in Arkansas that had helped us uh, during our formative years of our marriage. And they were traveling with Brother Copeland and helping him at the time. And they heard that uh, we were looking for another opportunity. And so they mentioned it to Brother Copeland. Uh, they called us. We came down. We went to a meeting, actually, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, a three-day meeting. And uh, it's Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night. 
We sat through that meeting, and we were in a glorious meeting on Friday morning, and the Lord spoke to us <laughs> and said, this is where I want you to be. Amen. Amen. Now, we've not talked to Kendall and Gloria. We haven't, and nothing is finalized except we heard from God. Right. right. And so I said, okay, that's fine, but you better speak to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's time to talk to somebody else. You know, here's the thing. We have people show up at our front door all the time. Yeah. Everything they own is on top of their car. Yeah. All the kids, everything else, you know, and, well, God sent us here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he may have spoken to them, but he didn't speak to us. Yes. So there's got to be some agreement here. Yes. And now someone has picked up, left, shown up at our place saying, God sent us. Now we've got to deal with this. Yeah. Because somebody, timing is everything. Yes. Yeah. You know, That's maybe right. they should have been at KCM at some point, but the timing is not right. Right. Yes. You, can, you, you know, and, and God seems like he's always late, <laughs> you know, <laughs> by our, our uh, flesh, standing, yeah. you know, yeah. he's always late, but he's not. He's not. He knows when you're ready. Yes. He, yes. And, and we have to wait to until time. that time is right. Amen. You know. Well, the timing was right for us. We went down to Indianapolis. The Lord said, this is where I want you to be. We waited until we could meet with Kenneth and Gloria. It was Saturday night after the Saturday night service. And uh, we went out. We had dinner. And I, I was unsure mm -hmm. uh, until God spoke to us about this being the place, you know. Uh, but when we visited with Brother Copeland, he shared his vision with us. Yes. And here's what he said. He said, uh, I want a better relationship with the local church. Mm. Mm. The way the ministry grew up, it was outside the church. Because there were no churches like yours. Right. Uh, they're not there. And so Brother Copeland, the way he was instructed to, to build his ministry was, you just go do what I ask you to do, as far as the Lord was concerned. Right. You don't ask anybody to finance it. You don't ask anybody for anything. You just go where I tell you to go. And do what I tell you to do. And so that's what he did. That's, that's basically what he told us to do. And yeah. and it grew. Yeah. Well, everybody doesn't, you know, at the time, and even today, doesn't like the message. Yeah. You know. But he did what he was instructed to do. Amen. But he didn't want to do it that way. His, his preference would have been to be connected with the local church and working together with the local church. Right rather than outside of it. But he wasn't accepted at the time. And the message was different to them. Right. It didn't fit with what they thought uh, the word said. And so there was a lot of opposition to it. So right. he gave me the task <laughs> of improving the communications with the local church. Just a little fact, that, that, was, <laughs> that was 35 years ago, and I'm still working yeah. on it. <laughs> But it's a lot better today than it was then. You know? Praise God. We're glad you stayed the course on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you, you have to do that. But uh, we knew that that was where we're supposed to be. And Amen. so uh, that was Saturday night. Monday morning they called me and said, come on down. Mm -hmm. So we packed up everything we had, and we took off to Fort Worth, Texas, and been there ever since. Yeah. And God. God is good. Amen. He has provided. He has blessed us beyond measure. Yes. And, you know, more than, I mean, I'm from Mark Tree, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Little bitty nothing down, you know. If, if God can take a kid from Mark Tree, Arkansas, and get him to a place where you travel around the world. Yeah. I mean, what can he do for you? Yes. Amen. I mean, it, it's just, it's amazing what God can do with your life if you just get in his plan. Amen. Yeah. That's the challenge. And so in that obedience now, where has it taken you? What are some of the places around the world that you've been? Which, And it may be easier to say, where haven't you been? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what's some of the big places you've been to? Let me tell you about, the not the big places we've okay. been. And we've been to a lot of places. You know, and we have we have offices, obviously, I in, love in a lot of different yeah. countries. Right. But some of the places that we've been that... You wonder, why are we here? 
<laughs> but here's one of the great things about Brother Copeland. Yeah. He's going to do what God asks him to Amen. do. That's right. Whether it makes sense or not, yeah. whether it's logical or not, mm-hmm. or whether it seems like it's the best thing for the ministry or not. Right. Praise God. We, we went to Australia, and yeah, we were doing a convention in Australia. In order to get to Australia at the time, the aircraft that we had, he had to fly to a number of different places to get there because the range was not, you know, the right. aircraft didn't have the range to fly directly across. So, left, left California and flew to Cold Bay, Alaska. <laughs> now, you know where Cold Bay is, of course. <laughs> it's cold. Yeah, yeah. it's cold. <laughs> if, if you look at a map, there's a, a string of islands yeah. that comes out off of mm-hmm. the south part of Alaska. And right at the end of that, into the Bering Strait, there's a place called Cold Bay. Wow. You can only get there by air or sea. That's it. Well, it's a fueling station. That's all it is. It's just a fueling stop, you know. And so they flew there refueled. When they got off the aircraft, they go into the terminal there, if you want to call it. That was a Quonset hut. Now, you would know yeah. what a Quonset hut is. Yes. Most of the people don't. <laughs> because it's a structure that was easy to put up during World War II. Yes, and right. so that was the terminal. So they go inside. This lady behind the um, the counter, she just goes ballistic. <laughs> Brother Copeland, <laughs> glory to God, you're in Cold Bay, Alaska. <laughs> Nobody comes to Cold Bay, Alaska. We need the word in Cold Bay, Alaska. Well, it's one of our partners. Yeah. Oh, you know, cool. and she's just jumping up and down, running around the terminal because <laughs> Brother Copeland's in Cold Bay, Alaska. I can understand why nobody goes to Cold Bay Alaska. <laughs> you can't get there from here, right? Yes. You know. So anyway, they refuel. They get back on the airplane. They fly south to Hawaii and then over to Majuro in the Marshall Islands. So they're out there refueling, and Brother Copeland's on the airplane. He's having lunch on the airplane. One of the pilots is walking from the terminal out to the airplane. There's a guy standing at the fence, and he yells at the pilot and says, Hey! Is that Brother Copeland's airplane? Now, I don't know how he knows this, but anyway, he's asking him the question, right? And the pilot says, yes, sir. He said, well, I need to talk to him. <laughs> and so, Brother Copeland is very approachable if he's not in meeting mode. Right. right. Now, once right. he gets into meeting mode, he's totally focused on what God <laughs> wants him to say for yeah. that meeting. Right. But yeah. anyway, the pilot goes on board and says, Brother Copeland, this man out here wants to speak to you at the fence. And... I don't know him. I don't know him. <laughs> he just says he, and he's very emphatic about it. And so Brother Copeland says, okay. So he goes out to the fence. And this guy says, Brother Copeland, we need the word in the Marshall Islands. <laughs> Nobody ever comes to the Marshall Islands. We need the word in the Marshall Islands. Wow. Well, do you see a pattern? Yeah. Here? yeah. So this is perking inside of Brother Copeland, you know. By the time he gets to Australia, he takes the platform. Now, I have not missed a meeting in 35 years. <laughs> the reason is, that's when I find out what I'm going to be doing next. <laughs> that's you know, everybody thinks we have these big meetings, you know, and we're planning the two years and five years and ten years. And that doesn't happen. <laughs> Brother Copeland, he hears from God. And yeah. when he, it typically comes out in our meetings. So he takes the platform on Monday night first night of this convention and says, we're going to the islands of the world. Yeah. Well, I hear that, of course, and I'm thinking, that's news to you. <laughs> do you know how many islands there are in the world? What, what direction do we go? Yeah. You know? But this is the life of faith. Yes. Mm-hmm. Adventures in faith, as Dr. Savell says. Yes. And that's what the last 35 years have been for me, my family, is adventures in faith, yeah. going where Brother Copeland wants to go, no matter where it may be. So we wind up going to Cold Bay, Alaska, <laughs> having a meeting with Brother Copeland, Jerry Savelle, and Jesse DePlantis. <laughs> now, the population of Cold Bay, Alaska is 112. Oh. How, many, how many ministers would go do that? There you are. Yeah. And the question is, why? Right. Uh, 
It doesn't matter why if God says. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There is a plan. There is a purpose for this meeting. Who knows? We will not know. I don't know to this day. But we went there. We had a meeting in the high school gym. Okay. There were 10 people in that meeting. Yeah. 10 people. Well, that's not so bad. That's 10% of the population. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, we don't know why, but we were there. Yeah. And, of course, there's a lot I could go into as to yeah. how God put that together. But here's the thing. God has divine connections. Whatever he's called you to do, yes. God precedes, God prepares, yes. and God yes. provides. Amen. If you're on the right path, if you're on the plan that God has for your life, yeah. he will precede, he'll prepare you for it, and when you get there, when you have a need, he'll yes. provide it. Amen. Amen. And that, that's just it. So when, when you hear from the Lord and you're obedient and you just go after him, you will find that God was there. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you right now. We got just a couple minutes left. And, and I just want to say, you know, we're so glad to have you today. We're glad to have you on our new set, and uh, we're glad to have you, and I want to hear more from you. I'm looking forward to these next few episodes of hearing from you and hearing more about your ministry with Brother Copeland and just what the Lord's shown you. you I know you and I have talked for at length at times, and this man has so much insight and wisdom into ministry because he's about seeing every facet right. of it. He's seen, and he can help you in your Christian walk. Uh, and I just want to open that up as we go forward. So we're going to talk about what's the Lord been talking to you about. Maybe hear some more stories about uh, KCM. And as we as we talk about that, one thing I wanted to share about KCM was a, a lot of people that are here locally. Uh, they think that, you know, we just eat and breathe KCM because we're partners with them. Well, mm -hmm. partnership's important mm -hmm. to yes. us. Yes, it is. That's, it's important to us. And if the, just like what you were saying with Brother Copeland, if, if he said, God said to do something, then he wanted to be obedient to it, you know. And we want to be the same way. That's if right. God told us to do something, we want to be obedient. I did not like KCM. Uh, I had heard stuff and formed an opinion based off of some people that I, you know, I liked what they said and, you know, and uh, some were very close to me. And then the Lord told me to go down to a Southwest Believers Convention. I went down there and here's what I found. Exactly what you said about Cold Bay, Alaska. KCM moved in more love yes. and more excellence than I had ever seen in any other ministry. Right. And I'd looked at them, I've been watching them, and uh, one of the things with uh, Mr. Barry is that I'd see him peek his head out from behind the, the curtain and, and he'd nod at somebody and they'd move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he he made stuff happen. I just watched. I watched for years before you and I really met. And the heart of love was in that ministry from the top to the bottom. I mean, it just spread throughout that. One time there was a lady at Southwest, it was a few years ago, uh, she was being pretty belligerent, pretty out of order, and uh, she came up in the middle, it was about, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday on that day, and uh, she had been out of order, kind of pushing the boundaries, and the usher stopped her, and all of a sudden I saw a look come on uh, Brother Copeland's face, and he, he went, and he went over there too, I was like, well, it's about to get interesting <laughs> now, <laughs> and uh I saw him move yeah. in more love with yeah. that woman. I went, oh, I started crying because I went, that's what's been missing from ministry. Yeah. So we got 30 seconds left. Go Let ahead. Let me tell you one thing. Yes, sir. We were in Australia. There was a woman that came up and he in the prayer line. Yeah. And he was trying to minister. She was demonically. I yes. Mean, she, yeah. she was possessed. She spit in his face. Uh huh spit in his face and I'm standing there thinking oh my <laughs> word what is going to happen now he just smiled ministered to her in love and got her delivered amen. amen amen thank you for being with us on Connection Show today we love you have a great day Mr. Barry next week next episode is going to be awesome thank you for being here bye bye thank you for joining Brian and Nicole for this week's broadcast Connection is all about connecting you more intimately with Jesus, where you can find true joy and really live. 
contact us or watch more shows online at connectionshow.org. We love you. Have a great week.